as I'm recording this, the venerated studio Ghibli is uh, no longer the hive of activity that it once was. Hayao Miyazaki is working on a film, but it's going very slowly. Isao Takahata has sadly passed away, and in general, there's just not much coming out of Studio Ghibli. And uh, this has led to the obvious question, who will be the next Studio Ghibli? Well, a group of ex-Ghibli folks uh, moved on to form a new studio called Studio Ponok, uh, or Ponok, or Ponok, I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, I'm going to call it Studio Ponok in this. Um, and they've done uh, uh, a film, Mary and the Witch's Flower, and a series of short films um, uh, called Studio Pinoc Theater. And I'm going to uh, talk about that third one now, particularly about this question of, is this the new Studio Ghibli? <sighs> Here's the problem. No one thing is the same as any other thing. Um, if you're looking to exactly replicate Studio Ghibli, you're always going to be disappointed on some level. Um, the reality is everyone's different. However, the themes and elements that are characteristic of Studio Ghibli, um, respect for life, um, um, strong family, um, very detailed naturalistic animation. All of those things are very much in evident in the Studio Pinoc short films theater, which is made up of three short films all sort of pushed together. Uh, the first is a little fantasy story about a group of uh, little humanoid creatures uh, who live in a river um, and have to deal with you know fish and frogs and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, it's a in some ways, um, uh, cute film when it first starts out, but as with uh, many of, of those sorts of, uh, of short films, uh, danger quickly rears its ugly head. And um, I found this to be a really effective little short film in the classic sense of short films, um, where you don't have too much time, so you need to have a, an arresting premise, something you wouldn't see anywhere else, um, and you need to execute on that really effectively over the course of your entire running time. Um, you know, establish the rules of your world and work to them uh, and get to your climax. And this absolutely does that. I found it to be um, uh, a really fun ride all the way through. The second is a short film about um, a young boy and his mother dealing with uh, the fact that the young boy has, and I won't spoil it, but a uh, medical condition. Uh, that he has to has to deal with, and it's really more a testament to the people who have to deal with children with medical conditions. The fact that children know that this is a thing, um, but they are immature by definition. Children don't have the um, the skills, the restraint, the self discipline to uh, deal with that the way that adults can, and how tiring that is, how difficult that is for parents. Um, even when parents are at their best, even when they're doing everything they can, it's still a lot and things can fall through the cracks. Um, so in many ways, this is really a testament to the children and um, adults dealing with that and how tough that is and how, how, um, how hard that vigilance is in dealing with, uh, with such things. And the final segment is um, really a philosophical kind of art piece, um, much more like an experimental short film, one of those things where it has a very high concept, um, but it has some beautiful animation, and it is more a celebration of the animator's art because of how um, difficult it is to animate the particular kind of metaphor that they are getting across in that short film. And again, I don't want to spoil uh, any of that, but suffice it to say this is more about studying how the animator got, got across um, certain movements, how he, uh, how he or, she, or she, depending on the, on the cut, I'm sure, um, how that animator is um, um, communicating, what, it, what is being told in this particular cut with what we see on screen. Um, and I love it for that. I, I, I love that kind of thing personally. I'm sure a lot of people will find it a little bit too high concept for them, um, 
um, is probably the one film on this that folks will um, uh, be most divisive about in terms of liking or not liking. But um, I think it is absolutely a very effective example of that kind of high concept short film. Um, it doesn't really fit too well in the sort of Studio Ghibli, you know, canon because Ghibli just isn't like that. Although Princess Kaguya would absolutely be more like what that is. Um, so if you like Princess Kaguya, um, it, it's not quite the same, but uh, it's more in that more you know visually um, um, experimental, I guess is is the best word um, yeah, on on that side of things. Anyway. I do not think Studio Pinoc is going to replace Studio Ghibli. I do believe they have the DNA to be able to make anime that feels like it fills that niche without feeling slavish. So this is one of the reasons I was so glad to see that last segment in Studio Pinocchio Theater, because this doesn't feel like just we're going to replicate the Studio Ghibli formula. This feels like people who are um, trying to forge their own path um, while having learned the lessons that they learned at Ghibli. Ghibli's not perfect. Ghibli had, it, had its own and has its own way of doing things. Um, and I think it's great seeing people who are willing to drive forward with this, that kind of storytelling, that kind of anime. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they, they make. Full disclosure, I have not seen Mary and the Witch's Flower yet. Um, I'm looking forward to trying it out. I've heard a variety of things. Uh, so this is not based on seeing that, based purely on seeing Studio Pinocchio short film theater. But based on that, I think they have potential. Even if I don't end up liking Mary, um, I think this shows that um, the seed is there. And so um, we are, I'm looking forward to seeing what they make.